Good evening and welcome to our Sunday night service and tonight we're going to take a look at Psalm 138 but before we do let's go to God in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father we thank you and praise you for this evening. Lord we thank you and praise you for your word tonight. We ask that you would speak to us through your word. Um, help us to understand more about you. Lord we just thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor in Jesus precious name. Amen and amen. Well, today I just want to thank the Lord also for a wonderful time of fellowship this afternoon. A great time with the church family and uh, out at the uh, barbecue at uh, Bob and Patty's. And uh, just really thank the Lord for, for all of that time. It was wonderful, great to uh, catch up with people and to just uh, lift up the name of Jesus. And we just thank God for that. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to look at Psalm 138. So I'm going to go ahead and read that. So Psalm 138, starting at verse 1, I will praise thee. With my whole heart, before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. In the day when I cried, thou answerest me, and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Well, praise the Lord. This psalm is uh, pretty fantastic. I, I got to tell you, there's a lot of real um, just awesome stuff here. And we're going to take a look at, as we go through it. You know, with, Let's go to verse 1. Let's start there. I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Now, before you get tripped up, let me make sure you understand there is only one God. That is the Lord God. This little G gods, these are men that would make themselves uh, gods or fallen angels that would assume or try to make themselves gods. But it's little G. They are, they are, they are no gods. They are nothing. You know, these idols of men, these idols of uh, man's hearts, they're nothing. There is only one God. That is the Lord God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. He alone rules and reigns. He alone is worthy of honor, glory. The, the gods of this world, they're idols. They have mouths and they don't speak. They have ears and they don't hear. They have eyes and they don't see. And so are all that put their trust in them. That's what the scripture says. So we know that the Lord God is God, and He alone is worthy of praise. He alone is worthy of glory, and He alone is worthy of honor. So we praise God. We thank Him, and we will praise Him with our whole heart. Not part of our heart, not a little bit of it, not most of it, but our whole heart. You know, sometimes people want to praise the Lord half-heartedly. Well, that doesn't please God. You know, can you imagine being in a relationship half-heartedly? Come on. You know, if you are a husband or a wife, you want your spouse to be all in to that relationship. You, you want that person to be fully committed, not partially, not a little bit, not mostly, but fully committed. And this is the way that God would have us be with him, fully committed, our whole heart praising him, our whole heart dedicated to him. You know, this is an important part, a point for you to examine in your own life. You know, do you love God this way? Are you praising him this way? Are you loving him this way? Is it is it everything in you to just give him all of your heart? Or are you holding back something? Are you giving him just a little bit? Or are you just giving him lip service? You see, God wants your whole heart. And it's an important point that the psalmist makes here. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. And, and, and here's another part of that too. You know, making sure that the idols of this world, the false religions of this world, the, all of these folks know where you stand. Where do you stand? Do you stand for the Lord? Are you going to put your foot down and say, I, I'm going to worship the Lord and Him only? I'm going to praise God? Just be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? You say, you know, no matter what you do, Nebuchadnezzar, just be it known, 
we're not going to bow down and worship your statue. You know, are you going to stand up in courage today against all the idolatry that's going on in this world, all of the false religion, all the false hope that's going on in this world, the false teaching, the false, uh, the world view that is absolutely in, it's corrupt and in opposition to the Lord. See, today, men try to make themselves their own God. You know, I, I think it's amazing to me you know, the terminology that people use today, even uh, ladies using the word for themselves, trying to call themselves a diva. Diva meaning divine. But there's one that is, and that is the Lord God. He alone is God. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. You know, worshiping toward, toward the Lord. You know, we, we exalt and lift up the Lord. We lift our praises up to him into heaven. We, we glorify him on the earth. We let his name be known to all men and all women that God is God. That he is loving, that he's kind, and he's compassionate, and he's merciful, but he's also just. We praise his name for his loving kindness and for thy truth. You can trust what he says. He is loving kind. You know, the loving kindness of the Lord is it's an amazing thing to look at and to think about because he loved us when we were yet his enemies. When we were hating him, he was loving us. He loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us, for our sins. Jesus taking our place, the place of death that we deserved, he took it upon himself. The wrath of God he bore for us. His loving kindness evidenced by what he's done, what he said. You know, he says here in, for thy truth. It says, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. See how important God's word is? That he has magnified his word above his name? We know the name of the Lord is holy. I mean, it, the name of the Lord is so holy that, you know, when you think about the, when they were writing and copying scripture, every time they came to the name of the Lord, you know, they, they, they cleanse themselves, they wash themselves, they purify themselves before they would, they would write down his name. I mean, so careful were they in, in the use of his name. And yet today men blaspheme his name. God has exalted his word above his name. Think about that for a minute. Does God look over, watch over his word to perform it? He does. His word is absolutely trustworthy. You can put your faith and trust in his holy word. Not what somebody else says in their book about what God says in his word, but what God says in his word. Sometimes men and women, the write books, some books are good and some books are horribly bad. A horrible misrepresentation of God. But the Bible represents God accurately, completely, every time, fully. To give man an understanding of who God is, what he has done, what he wants to do, and what he will do. You know, we have his word so we can know him. We can understand him. We can see his, his heart. Not willing to, that any should perish but all come to repentance. The heart of the Lord is revealed in his word. His loving kindness, his mercy, his compassion is revealed in his word. His justice is revealed in His Word. His truth. God does not lie. He never lies. He always tells the truth. Always. It says, In the day when I cried, Thou answered me and strengthened me with strength in my soul. You know, maybe you're in an okay place right now in your life where everything's going along pretty good. Maybe there's no huge emergency going on in your life and you think everything is just fine. But I caution you to lean on the Lord now more than ever. 
Because just as surely as things are smooth today, tomorrow they may not be. And we see the psalmist when he says, In the day I cried, thou answerest me. You have confidence now to know that when you cry and call upon the name of the Lord, he's not far off. He's not unconcerned. He's right there. He answers prayer. He answers your cry to him for mercy, for help, for his grace. He answers every time. And the fact that he strengthens us with strength in our soul, I, I love that. You know, our outward man perishes, but the inward man is renewed day by day. He strengthens us in here, renews us in here, makes us strong in here. Even if the outside is falling apart, maybe the outside is not working like it used to. Maybe the outside is, is not cooperating with us in what we want it to do. Yet our inward man is renewed day by day. He strengthens us in our soul. We're more resolved today than we were yesterday to serve the Lord, to follow Him wherever He goes. We're more resolved today to put, to put our eyes on Jesus, to grab onto Him and never let go. Day by day, He strengthens us in our soul. In the times when we're going through great adversity, He strengthens us in our soul where we need the strength. He strengthens us and helps us. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. You know, what great assurance is this? And, and, and this is reflected multiple times throughout the scripture, that there is a day coming when all the kings of the earth will bow the knee before the Lord Jesus Christ. He will rule and reign on this earth. He's coming back. He is king of kings and lord of lords all power and all authority has been given unto him he is going to rule and reign right here on this planet and men and women will see him the kings of the earth will come before him and bow before him today they might be walking in the pride and their arrogance thinking that they rule themselves but god rules over all god is in control even though they think that they are running things no no God turns the hearts of kings. God is in control. And now I say that they need to humble themselves. They need to look for his mercy and his grace. Because some kings' hearts are turned to their own destruction. We saw that in the case of Pharaoh. Pharaoh's heart hardened. He decided to pursue the children of Israel to his own destruction. These things can happen when kings elevate themselves in pride and arrogance. God deals with the leaders of this world, each one. Our responsibility as Christians is to pray for those in leadership, pray for them because they need the Lord's direction. They need his help. One day, all the kings of the earth will praise him. Those who are in denial from atheistic nations, those that are uh, in, in opposition from you know, all the false religions of this world, they will all come and bow the knee before the Lord Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord for great is the glory of the Lord. Not only will they, they come and praise Him, they will sing unto Him. Sing praises unto Him. Isn't that amazing? Did you think about that, that day when all the kings of this world will come and sing praises unto Jesus Christ to give Him glory and honor because He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly. Think about that. Although God is God, the one who created all things, the one who is worthy and of all honor and all glory and all majesty, all powerful, all knowing, God who is, is king of all, he has respect unto the lowly. He cares for those that are of meek and humble heart. 
He takes care of you and me. He's not unconcerned. He's very concerned with us. Humble your heart. Don't lift yourself up in pride because the second part of that verse says, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Means if you're walking in pride and arrogance, it puts you in opposition to the Lord. It puts you in a bad place. And so don't walk in pride and arrogance. Walk in humility. Walk humbly before God. Seek his face. Look to him and trust him. Ask his help. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him glory. Don't say, look at the works that I have done and my hands have done. Don't do that. Give God the praise and the glory. Don't take it for yourself. It's an empty thing to take glory to yourself anyway. Because there's nothing you have that he did not give you. There's nothing that you are that he did not give you the ability to be. You're smart. You have much intelligence. Who gave that to you? God did. God did. It says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. God will protect his people. God will protect his people. Surely there's a day coming when persecution will be launched against the church. The Bible tells a lot about that. The Antichrist will wage war against the saints and overcome them. God will not contradict his own word. That day will come. But in the midst of that, in the midst of the fiery trial, in the midst of the time where people's lives will be taken uh, from them by the Antichrist and those that worship the Antichrist, in those days, they cannot touch what God has done in here. They cannot touch the born again you. Your flesh will die. This body is going to the, to the dust anyway. There'll be a day when each one of us physically dies. But you, you're the born again spirit, you won't. See, here's the thing. Everybody, like I said this morning, everybody spends eternity somewhere. There's only two places you can spend eternity, heaven or hell. The only way to get to have eternal life is through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It is only through a relationship with Jesus Christ that you might have eternal life. He is the source of life. He is the light of life. He is the bread of life. He is the water of life. He is the source of life. If you don't have Christ, you don't have life. If you don't have Jesus Christ, then hell is your destination when you die. And the only way to change that is to repent of your sin and trust Jesus Christ. Everybody spends eternity somewhere. Where you spend eternity is a choice that you alone bear. Choose Him. Choose Jesus. And you have life. Choose anything else and you will not have life. He walked it says, though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou will revive me. He strengthens us. He keeps us. He holds us. Verse 8 says, The Lord will perfect that which concern, concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. You know, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. He's going to perfect it. Those things in your life that you need in your life to, to help you walk with the Lord, help you in your relationship with Christ. God knows those things. God brings those things into your life. You know, sometimes people don't understand adversity, trouble, things that come into our lives. Those things help us. You're like, well, I don't like them. But they refine you. They refine your faith. They refine your walk. You know, purified like gold through the fire. You know, this is, you know, our lives are put to test to see whether we love him, whether we'll follow him, whether we'll obey his word. 
tests, trials, persecutions, these are not things that are pleasant to us, but they are blessings to us because they help us in our walk with Him. Sometimes people don't look at things like that. But it is very much true. He says, O Lord, it says, Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. His mercy endures forever. I want you to think about that for a second. His mercy endures forever. You know, if you put faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you are walking with Him, you're living for Him, this is something that has eternal significance and eternal blessing to you forever and ever and ever and ever and ever you will be thankful to God for what he has done you'll have life his mercy endures forever we have a hard time understanding and even comprehending or looking at that term forever we 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 don't grasp it because we live in time God is eternal we live in you know in the there's a construct of time there'll be a day when the the lord stops time you know that I mean it says there it says in revelation the angel put his foot on the shore in the sea and said the interval of time is no more so there'll be a day that comes but until that day we deal with time so it's very hard for us to think about forever we can't conceive it we can't wrap our minds around it We're kind of, you know, it, it's kind of difficult for us. But to think about the fact that his mercy endures forever, it's, it's amazing. So you, you'll have life because of Jesus Christ forever, right? And it is forever because of his mercy that you have life. It is amazing. Forever and ever and ever we will praise Him and thank Him and, and glorify Him for His mercy that He has shed upon us. You know, some people live a long time. My grandfather's 98. I know some people live over 100. Um, wonderful, long lives. Thank God. But in comparison to forever, <laughs> it doesn't even register. Not even a speck on the radar. Because forever is so immensely longer than that. You know, in this life, sometimes when you're, especially when you're a kid, you think one year is so long, you know, I think it takes forever. But the older that we get, the years pass by so quickly, so quickly. And we realize that time is very short, in fact, because our perception changes. We, we begin to understand more about how short life truly is on this planet, in this body. Imagine how much better of an understanding you will have once you are with the Lord about this time, this short amount of time here. People want to live their lives for themselves in such a tragic waste because God has gifted you life. He's blessed you with life. So life given by God should be lived for God. Life given by God should be lived for God. However much time you have remaining in your life, only the Lord knows. But as you live this life, the remaining time that you have, live it for Him. Give God the praise and the glory and the honor every single moment that you have breath. Praise Him with your whole heart. Praise Him with your whole life. Praise Him with your whole mind. Give Him the praise. Love Him the same way. Love your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give God the glory due His name because He truly is worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Amen? Forsake not the works of thine own hands. You know, we, he says, Lord, 
Uh, thy mercy, O Lord, endure forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. He's asking God not to forsake him, not to forsake us. I do thank God because he didn't give up on us. He could have. Oh, remember Noah's day? He regretted making man. But Noah found grace in his sight. And thanks be to God for that. Because God could have just ended everything at that time, at that, time, that moment. In our lives, we lived our lives earlier for ourselves in rebellion against God. And he certainly could have taken our life at any moment. Because he holds our lives in his hand. He holds our very breath. Yet God extended mercy to us. When we deserve judgment, he, he gave mercy. He gave love, grace. God extends that to us now. If you're not walking with the Lord Jesus Christ right now, I encourage you to surrender your heart, your life to the Lord. Give him everything. You'll regret it never. <laughs> never will you regret it. Because God does love you. You may not know that right now. You may not feel that right now. But I tell you right now, it's a fact and it's the truth that God does love you. Give your life to Him. Let Him demonstrate in your heart and your life the love that He has for you. Turn to Jesus Christ today and say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. I've walked in rebellion against you all my life. Please forgive me. Cleanse me from my unrighteousness. I know that you died for me on the cross. I know that you shed your blood. I know that on the third day you rose again and that you're coming back again. Lord, I put my trust in you. You know, the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt... If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. He's waiting for you today. Jesus said you must be born again. Trust him. He will never let you down. God bless you. I pray you have a blessed night in Jesus. Love you. God bless you. We'll see you again next time. Have a good night.